Come on, bro. So I can tell you my story. Let's start this story. July 23rd, 2015. I got out of Missouri Eastern Correctional Center to a telephone $1,500 uh, uh, ex-girlfriend that was a then girlfriend at the time and nothing really to do with my life. When I got out of the joint, the first person I seen was the lady that came and got me, my ex-girlfriend at the time. Her name tattooed on my side. I make extremely bad decisions and I stand on them. So that's going to really be a general theme of me telling you my story. But you would get it. So I got out of prison and I wasn't out of prison a good six hours and I was already back into the street life that I went to prison for living. I got right back to it like I never left. I got out of prison and the first thing I did was bought an Xbox and I still got the Xbox. Yeah, it's crazy. It been with me through everything that I've been through over the last eight, nine years, and I still got it. It is the most consistent thing in my life, and Call of Duty is my stress reliever, so it work out like it's supposed to. I bought an Xbox. I seen my mama. I got right back after I visited my mother, and she asked me what I was going to do with my life. I told her I was right back to it like I never left. I got right back to playing in the streets. But at the time all this was going on, my mother was dying from multiple sclerosis. And it was kind of heavy on my mind because the only wish I had while I was in prison for the second time making my way home was that I get out of prison before my mother take her last breath. It had just been eating at me so many people that were around me when I was in a joint who mothers and fathers and all that had died and they wasn't there to be a part of it. So... My only wish really at the time was that I make it out of prison for my mother's passing so I can do whatever it is that she need me to do. And by good standard, I got out of prison. So I got right back into the streets and doing what I was doing. And my mama put it on my mind that she wanted to be cremated. And the reason she wanted to be cremated was because she didn't want nobody to stand over her dead body and say anything to her in depth that they couldn't say to her in life. And I felt that in my soul. I felt it. So much so that later on down the line, I did something else, but we ain't got to that point yet. I felt what she was saying in my soul. So it cost a couple hundred dollars, a few hundred, several thousand change to be cremated and all that. I wouldn't put the money up for her to be cremated and for myself to be cremated just in case I went before her because the lifestyle that I was living came with dying and going to jail. So, she put it on my mind because of the lifestyle that I was living. Like, you need to go and put you some money up to get cream. I want to be cremated too. So, put something up for me too. Both of us, we going to both be cremated. Hopefully, I go before you that conversation. So, I'm right back into the street life doing everything under the sun for a good seven, eight, seven, eight months. Right, roll over into 2016, and my mother's health is deteriorating. I told you she had multiple sclerosis, and I can't really tell you what it is, but I know it's something, right? And it took her from me in the hardest of ways because I got to see my mother go from the strong, punch you in your mouth type of woman that she was to being paralyzed from the chest down and extremely humble. Right, it would the her end was not what I was expecting, and it it, it hurt me. It, it hurt me in such a way, right? It hurt me in such a way. But that just kind of was what it was, and it wasn't nothing I could do about it. And she used to preach that to me all the time, like what I got ain't nothing can be done about it. You don't have to worry about what it's gonna do to me. It's gonna do what it's gonna do, and you just gotta deal with it. And that's hard to accept as a son looking at his mom. So 2016 rolled around and I asked my mother the question of all questions. I should have 
started this story with this, but I didn't. I took you back a little bit further so you, if you understand the dynamics of what's going to happen right here. This is where my life really changed. I was holding a conversation with my mother, and I had a good 200 years worth of felony charges in my possession at the time I'm holding this conversation with my mama. But me and her chit-chatted like we always chit-chat, and we had a good rapport, so I didn't really have to watch my mouth when I was talking to her. All I had to do was just say what I was thinking, and she was going to respond what she was thinking, and we just go back and forth like this. So I sat and I asked my mother what she wanted for dying wish from me. What could I give her dying wish because she had already had a death scare previous to that conversation that we was having. She had just got out of the hospital. Or she had died. They brought her back. And we having a conversation. What she wanted from me, dying wish. And my mother looked me straight in my face and told me she wanted me to stop selling drugs and throwing rocks at the penitentiary. I was floored. I can't even tell you. I don't even have an explanation of how they hit me because I knew she was serious. That was the only thing she had ever kind of wanted from me my whole life was to play by the straight neural, and I never had. I've always been a mischievous, bad little kid, and I never grew up. I just evolved with the times. I've been around since crack cocaine wasn't here. I, I went through the crack cocaine movement. Luckily, my mother was never a crackhead. My uncle was, though. A couple, couple uncles, auntie or two. You know, them people, but my mother missed that, and it was what it was. That's why it hurt so much that she made it through all of that to lead the way that she did. But I asked her what she wanted for me dying wish. She told me she wanted me to stop selling drugs and throwing rocks at the penitentiary. I was floored. But I said that already. I didn't know what to do because that is all I ever known my whole life of playing in the streets of illegal dollar. I think I called it uh, an illegitimate entrepreneur in one of my books, but that was the that was the story of life that I was going with at that moment. And I plan to leave this earth under those type of conditions. Something that went along with the lifestyle that I was living. That's how I planned to go. I had already had my whole little funeral kind of planned out in my mind. It was going to be some chicks started fighting. It was somebody was probably going to get trailed home after that. It was going to be crazy. That is how I seen my ending. Needless to say, I'm making this video and it work out. But mama said she want me to stop doing that. But that's all I know. But for her, I gave her my word that I would. I literally broke both of my trap phones and threw them in the grass at the nursing home. I haven't sold a drug since.